Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are here for a four month baby update and a long awaited postpartum update. All right, like I said, we are here for Riker's four month update. This little guy is four months old and he's such a happy, good baby boy. And I can't wait to share with you guys all of the things that are happening with him. So first and foremost, weight and such. I'm not quite sure. He had his um, four month appointment early. Um, he had it like a week early. So he is like just around 15 pounds. Um, he is like in the 50th percentile for his weight, in the 89th percentile for his height, and his head is in the 92nd percentile. He's a big old head, guys. He's a big head. Um, weight is right on track, and he is a long little guy. He is rolling over on his own now from his back to his belly, and he's working on from his belly to his back. He can hold up his head really, really well. Um, yeah, he's just, as you can see, he's just so chill. He just hangs out all the time. Sometimes he likes to squeal. Sometimes he likes to like talk to mama. It's so sweet. I love watching my kids interact together. That's probably my most favorite thing about having two kids is that I get to watch Kaya interact with him as well. She's such a good big sister with him. She like will sing to him and rock him and she's just so sweet. Now Riker is, gosh, let's see, he is now fully on formula. As you guys know, I did stop breastfeeding. Um, I stopped breastfeeding a little bit after four months and that was because um, I was pretty much dried up and I tried power pumping, I tried supplements. I do have a video um, and I'll link it up here for you guys. I have a video just kind of going over why I decided to stop breastfeeding. I will lightly touch on it in this video, but if you want like an in-depth reasoning, go ahead and check out that video. Um, I do work full time. A lot of you guys like to tune into my working, like working mom, like day in the life of a working mom videos. I've had an amazing workplace that's always let me um, have access to pumping whenever I want and that really helped prolong my breastfeeding journey with him this time around. My first time around, I only breastfed until about five, six weeks or so, um, and then I dried up, and I had quite a struggle um, my first time around trying to get my daughter transitioned to formula. It was really hard. Um, she was very constipated, and we had a lot of like bowel movement issues, and Riker has done a much better job. Now, even when I was breastfeeding, I was supplementing with formula, I was never producing quite enough for him. Um, so transitioning fully to formula was pretty easy for him. He was already on formula. We use the Infamil Gentle Ease Neuro Pro. Every baby is different. Now we knew with the issues that we had from Kaya that we were going to transition directly to like a gentle formula um, instead of a regular formula. He's looking on his toes right now because I'm like playing with them. Um, <laughs> so we just went straight to the gentle formula and that seemed to be just like the easiest, most natural transition for him. And he is chunking up quite a bit. He loves just to like hang out on his play mat. Um, he loves to roll around and like do his own thing. He's just seriously the easiest baby. The only time that he cries is if he needs a diaper change or if he's hungry. And it's mostly if he's hungry because um, when he is hungry, he will let you know. <laughs> he's such a sweet boy. Oh, I did see boy. Now, one like big difference between Riker and Kaya has been that he loves to suck on his thumb. Like Kaya was not a thumb sucker, and like none of my mom's kids were thumb suckers, but he loves to soothe himself with his thumb. He sucks on his thumb all the time. It's the cutest thing. I am a little bit worried about like weaning him off of it when he's older. Um, <laughs> I'm very worried about that because I know that it is difficult to get them to stop sucking on their thumb, but this wasn't something that like I like was enforcing or starting. This was just something that he kind of picked up on his own. Like one time when his pass, he fell out of his mouth, he found his thumb, and he just has been a thumb sucker ever since. He is now um, sleeping through the night as well, and there are a couple of things that we have done. Now I'm going to briefly go over what my baby schedule is with you guys. Something that, that I've like mostly enforced since he was born. Um, as soon as I got him home from the hospital, I tried implementing like a day and a night 
type of routine. So during the day, I would try to keep them up as much as possible after breastfeeding. Sometimes it's hard when they're really little because they get so sleepy. Um, but I would really try to keep them up after his feedings and I would try and let me, you can't eat my hair. Yep, there he goes with his thumb. So um, during the day, I just try to stick to a morning nap and an afternoon nap and sometimes he'll have like a short evening cat nap and um, this has really helped even out his nighttime schedule. If he just sticks to those naps during the day and that little cat nap at night, he will sleep through the night. And so typically I would feed, like when he was first born, we would feed every two hours. We'd breastfeed every two hours, two to three hours, even if I had to wake him to feed. Um, I just made sure that we were consistent on that schedule. Um, once he naturally was into that schedule, then it became a little bit easier and I was able to give him either formula or breast milk every couple hours. Um, while he was at daycare, they implemented the same routine and he did stick to that morning nap, afternoon nap, was eating every two to three hours. And then at night, we would try to keep him up for as long as possible. Um, we would try to avoid that cat nap, um, but sometimes it just happens. He gets really sleepy after daycare um, and like all of the hubbub that goes on. And then our nighttime routine, um, once that like day was really established, the nighttime routine, we do baths every other night and um, we like to kind of keep that routine the same. So whether it's a bath night or not, when I'm getting him ready for bed, I, you wanna see this buddy? Hi. Um, <laughs> whether it's a bath night or not, I will get him into his jammies, I'll change his bum, and I will get him into his sleep sack. Now, um, it's probably been a little over a month now. For the first little bit, we were using the Zen Swaddle Sack by Nested Bean. I'll leave that link down below for you guys. I have mentioned this in several of my other videos. This thing was awesome. It has a little weighted piece on the chest that just kind of soothes them and um, like gives them the sensation of a mother's touch. Um, we've really loved that swaddle sack or that sleep swaddle. And once he was rolling over, once your baby rolls over, it is time to transition them from swaddling into more of like a sleep sack type of thing. So now we're using the, the sleep sack. It's a zip, side zip um, sleep sack. Yeah, so now he is in the sleep sack and it just zips up the side, still has that weighted piece, but instead of their arms being swaddled, their arms are free, so it just kinda um, comes up over their shoulders. Two little straps come up over their shoulders. You can see his daddy over here in the corner. And um, like I said, that weighted piece is still on their chest. So it gives them that comfort and he is very much so a mama's boy. He just, you know what, he's like an anybody's boy though. He just loves to be cuddled. He loves that comfort, especially at nighttime. So that little extra weighted piece, I feel like has really made a huge difference in his sleep. So I will lay him down anywhere between eight and nine o'clock um, just because then I know he will wake up right around 6.30 or seven um, when I need to go to work. So that's why I lay him down between eight and nine and it gives me enough time to get ready in the morning um, without him being awake. Some like, it's been like rare, but there's occasions where he is awake at like maybe 5.30, 6 in the morning, so he is awake while I get ready. But honestly, it's only been a handful of times since I've gone back to work. And I've now been back to work for about a little over two months now because he is like four and a half-ish months. Um, and I've been back to work since eight weeks. So that's been going really well for us. Once I lay him down between eight and nine, um, I will just let him, I'll give him a bottle at night. After he's done with his bottle, he'll put himself to sleep. I do lay him next to the bed in the bassinet awake. Um, and he, like I said, will just soothe himself to sleep. Um, so I, that I'm teaching him how to put himself to sleep and I don't necessarily always need to be there um, to rock him, um, etc. but I do really, I love to rock him still. I love to cuddle him to sleep, but for the most part, he does um, put himself to sleep now, which is incredible. And his um, like sleeping like schedule, he's been he's been really good. Now, when he was younger, he was maybe waking up twice a night, and the right, right around like eight weeks, it was down to only once a night that he was waking up. Kaya's got like some crazy outfit on. Um, <laughs> Eight weeks, he was down to waking up about once a night, and this has like consistently stayed about the same for a while. 
Um, half the nights during the week he'll sleep through the night and then half the other nights he might wake up once for a bottle. It just, it really depends on how hungry he is. Um, sometimes when he wakes up in the middle of the night, he will soothe himself back to sleep with his thumb. Um, yeah, he's just a really chill, he's a really easy baby. Now, formula, we are feeding anywhere from four to six ounces still, and during the day, he is guzzling down a good six ounce bottle. I think we're just mostly at that six ounce point because when you give him four ounces, you can tell that he really wants to be topped off still. He's watching his sister eat a bowl of ice cream now. Just so distracting, all the things. That is where we're at with our formula feeding and stopping breastfeeding. And that is why I wanted to include me stopping breastfeeding. So this is the postpartum section of this video. I, like I said, just weaned from breastfeeding. Um, I can still feel that I'm like a little bit full. Um, it hasn't been uncomfortable and I'm not leaking and it's been an easy transition because I was drying up anyways. Um, I haven't need to like pump for comfort or anything like that. I did nurse him actually one night, which went pretty well, but that was kind of our last time. It was like a, it was just kind of like a last time for him, for me, or a good bonding experience. I, I don't know, I really loved breastfeeding him and I'm sad that I dried out, but at the same time, it has um, given me a little bit more freedom and mentally I do feel a lot better. Um, when I like think back to like all the pumping sessions, again, I, I really loved it and I enjoyed it because I knew I was providing my baby with the best nutrition for him. Um, it was really hard isolating myself, you know, every two, three hours to pump. It was easier when I was at work because I'm pretty much by myself in my office anyways. So pumping at work really wasn't that difficult. What was difficult was during the weekends when we'd be like out and about, or we'd be like with family or something. I'd have to like remove myself from the room or from wherever we were and go and pump or make sure that I had my pump parts and that I was cleaning them correctly and that everything was sanitized and that the milk storage and I had enough milk bags and I just, it was like so much work and I was never ever producing enough and I was taking all the supplements and was just such like I didn't realize how much of a mental toll it was taking on me until I stopped and I realized wow I feel a lot better I feel so much better another reason why I had stopped breastfeeding not just because I was drying up but also because um, I have been trying really hard to lose weight now I did lose all of my pregnancy weight but I gained with Riker, but I still had some extra fluff from the first time I got pregnant. Between getting married and getting pregnant for my first time, I had gained a little bit of weight in there as well. So I've just been trying to lose that weight and I just wanna get to a healthy BMI um, so that I can like be the healthiest that I can be for my kids and for myself, for my husband, just for our family overall. I just wanna make sure that I am in the best health that I can be. A little update on my weight loss. So my weight loss has actually been going really well. In the past like week, I've lost five pounds, which is super, and I've kind of been staying at that. Um, this week, I haven't really been watching when I eat super great, but I haven't been gaining, which is, you know what, I can't ask for any better. So on a typical day, now that I'm not breastfeeding, what I will do, a lot of like what I eat is to lose weight, and I plan to incorporate um, a little bit more fitness into my schedule as soon as my husband and I slow down on our side business orders. Um, so in the morning, I sometimes have breakfast, and if I do, it's something lower carb. Like um, I like the egg bites from Starbucks; it's a really good option. Um, and I do enjoy um, like those breakfast bowls, like the Jimmy Dean breakfast bowls. Um, I'll make like my own with some scrambled eggs and bacon. But for the most part, um, I try to intermittent fast. So I will skip breakfast. Oh my goodness. Now I wasn't doing this while I was breastfeeding because I obviously needed to keep my calories up and um, have a decent amount of carbohydrates as well to keep my supply up. So now that I'm not, it's a lot easier for me to eat a lower carb keto diet that is what I have the most success on. A lower carb breakfast or I'll just intermittent fast. I always have a coffee but I make sure that my coffee is sugar-free and I have just like maybe a heavy cream or, um, a unsweet or an unsweetened vanilla almond milk in my coffee. I enjoy iced coffee right now. I'll get the Starbucks iced coffee that you can get from the grocery store. I put some ice in there in the morning, like in a cup, and then some unsweetened vanilla almond milk and I'll take that with me in the vehicle on my way to work and I usually finish it by the time I get there because I need all the coffee in the morning on my way to work. I'm an accountant, so, 
I always feel like I need to like be ready to go as soon as I get to work and that coffee really gives me that boost. Um, and then for lunch, I've really, really been enjoying the healthy choice, um, like the lower carb options. They have a chicken broccoli um, with just Alfredo sauce, so no noodles and it's low carb. And it's something that I really enjoy, maybe like a little bit more spice on it, like a little bit more flavor. So like red pepper flakes, maybe some sriracha every now and then. But that is super yummy. And then they also have a low carb stir fry option with no noodles and that is really good as well. Um, anyway, so I will usually just flip flop those meals all week really been enjoying it if I don't have that I like to go out to eat like Chipotle and get a Chipotle salad um, I do enjoy the Chick-fil-A Cobb salad that's really good too um, otherwise I'll bring like stuff from home so I'll like pack my own chicken broccoli and Alfredo um, I like the sun-dried tomato Alfredo that's super good but and I know like Alfredo isn't the greatest and I'm trying to cut down to like the cleanest diet possible but I'm baby stepping into that but I'll usually just have that for lunch. I might have another coffee, and then I just drink a ton of water during the day. And then when I get home, we'll usually have a protein and a vegetable. So a lot of times I'll do like a roast in the crock pot with mashed cauliflower, um, with maybe some Parmesan on top of the mashed cauliflower, and maybe like make a, like a low carb gravy out of the drippings from the roast in the crock pot. Or um, we'll do like, like, grilled chicken breast, grilled drummies, chicken thighs, steaks, pork chops, pork loin, um, and just like a protein in general, or salmon. We really enjoy salmon as well, um, but we'll do that protein, and then our vegetables. I do have a video, which I will put up here for you guys, of like our roasted veggie routine, or like our roasted veggie um, recipe. I like to do, <laughs> I like to do sheet pan veggies for, um, for dinner because they stay crunchy. I love roasted broccoli in the oven. It's super, super good. All right, we're getting a little lengthy on this video, but I just wanted to give you guys like the best insight as to like what I eat. I do try to keep it lower carb. I might do like a diced potato with my meal once or twice a week, depending on how hungry I am. Um, yeah, just trying to keep it clean, simple, but really yummy. And it's easier to do that in the summertime, I feel, because we're always grilling. Like, we always have our smoker out. We're always, like, out there grilling. We're hanging out. Um, and if I have any drinks, I'll do, like, an ultralight or um, I will do, like, a vodka club soda. I really love those with lemon and lime. Oh, it's so good. Um, but those are, like, what I'll have for drinks. That has been pretty much my routine for the last little while. And now starting next week, I next week or like halfway through next week, I will be doing elliptical as soon as I get home. That's my favorite thing to do when you want to lose body fat. The best way to do that is with a lot of cardio. Yes, I know that um, lifting can also help burn the fat, but I like to get to the point like burning through the cardio and burning through that fat. I, I would like to see like another 30, 40 pounds before I really jump into my weight routine i know that a good like weightlifting routine would be good for me i need to strengthen my core after having two babies and i need to work on my um my upper body strength my lower body strength just in general i really need to tone up so that is the next stage of this process is to slowly start incorporating an exercise and my goal a year from now is to be down about 60 pounds um i've had a lot of you comment and say like oh my gosh you're gonna be like a stick if you lose 60 pounds but um I do carry a lot of my weight in my lower body, um, like right in my baby area, my baby tummy area, and especially in my butt and my thighs. So I'm going to be working on that. Stay tuned for those videos. I am going to start incorporating a weekly, um, like just like a health and fitness update or at least every other week. I wanna start showing you guys what my routine is as I start firming up, as I start toning. Um, and I am gonna start giving you guys really in-depth weight loss updates. I've kind of been promising that now for a while, um, but now that I'm really into it after stopping breastfeeding and I'm seeing good results from what I'm doing, I feel comfortable with sharing with you guys what I am doing. So, yes. Lots of weight loss stuff coming up for you guys. One last thing that I wanted to touch on is like my mental state postpartum wise. A lot of people wonder if once they stop breastfeeding if they're going to have any like 
postpartum depression because a lot of times that's when it sets in for people. So mentally, I am, I like, I was kind of hormonal my first week of weaning, so like the last couple weeks have been kind of hard. Um, and I'm now just starting to feel a little bit more stable. I have been really stressed out, <laughs> had a lot of things going on. I started a really awesome new job, um, but all of these things come with tolls. I just happen to be weaning and starting a new job at the same time. So there's just a lot happening at once. So there could have been like a lot going into play there. I really do love my new job. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with the weaning. I just was kind of all over the place as far as emotions. But like I said, after a couple of weeks, I really am starting to feel like myself again. Um, I'm starting to feel like there is like hope for my weight loss and that it's okay that I'm done breastfeeding. But I just wanted to quick give you guys like that mental update too that I am doing okay and that the postpartum depression or like the weaning after. Okay, sorry guys, my battery died. So um, mentally I am just, I'm feeling better. It was hard, I'm not going to lie. It was like a little bit bluesy and just like like a little bit of just like an overwhelming feeling. It's a really hard feeling to describe, but it's definitely what you would go through postpartum wise. Um, breastfeeding helped me like avoid that in the beginning, so now I am going through it late now that I'm weaning, but I'm feeling better. <laughs> Things are on the up and up. I'm feeling much more stable. I think like the biggest thing for me was that I seemed just like unstable and I just seemed tired all the time and I'm never, I'm never like that. So that was hard for me, but it could have been much worse and I'm really grateful that it wasn't. But like I said, I'm on the up and up. I'm feeling good, weight loss is happening. I'm feeling like I finally have my life back after breastfeeding and everything is going really well. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this four month postpartum update and four month baby update. He's just the sweetest guy. Look at him just sucking his thumb. He is a handsome big boy. And I think that he has a dirty bum. <laughs> yeah, you are just a cute boy. Can't you hi? Yep, sucking on his thumb. Sucking on his thumb. That's what you do best. This is sweet boy. Mwah. All right, guys. Like I said, I'm going to wrap it up there for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys this weekend on Saturday or Sunday for a really fun camping vlog. Stay tuned for our RV living summer life edition. And yes. All right. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye, guys.